Some Western media outlets that have been overall devout in their support for Kiev have now started to report on allegations of war crimes committed by Ukrainian soldiers. This comes after footage, which we can't broadcast because it's too disturbing, purports to show Ukrainian forces shooting captured Russian troops. These claims have been largely ignored by Western powers. Let's take a look at what The New York Times published recently. A video posted online on Monday and verified by The New York Times appears to show a group of Ukrainian soldiers killing captured Russian troops outside a village west of Kiev. He's still alive. Film these marauders. Look, he's still alive. He's gasping. A man says as a Russian soldier with a jacket pulled over his head, apparently wounded, is seen still breathing. A soldier then shoots the man twice. After the man keeps moving, the soldier shoots him again, and he stops. At least three other apparent Russian soldiers, including one with an obvious head wound who has his hands tied behind his back, can be seen dead near the victim. It's not only the New York Times that appears to be changing its narrative about Ukraine. The Washington Post has also examined the neo-Nazi roots of Ukraine's Azov Battalion, suggesting that white supremacists integrated into the Ukrainian military could pose a future threat to the country. Political analyst Alexander Pavich says these reports are only small departures from an overall narrative painted by Western media against Russia in an attempt to present a semblance of objectivity. I definitely think it's the latter. You know, they, they know that people are being becoming aware of the media bias. So this is just damage control. This is a way to make themselves look objective and fair-minded. But in fact, what they're doing, what's happening is that they're kind of they can't control the narrative the way they would like. You know, in back in the '90s, you know, you could control the narrative because there was no internet, and so you could more tightly control stories. You know, now there are just too many alternative means of information and, and real information and real truth does get out and they know it. So the only way to deal with it is to admit part of it and then make themselves look objective, but without changing their main narrative. And their main narrative is Russia is the enemy and just about anything that's done against Russia is allowed.